we're going to be looking at Doppler ultrasound. Here we have a point source of waves which is stationary and it's emitting waves of frequency f and if you had an observer or a detector of waves placed in front or behind the point source the observer or the detector would detect the same frequency f. Here you have a moving point source of waves emitting waves of frequency f and if you have an observer placed in front of the point source the observer will detect a higher frequency and that's because as the point source is moving towards the observer the observer will receive each wavefront in less time however for an observer who is behind the point source of waves it will detect a lower frequency and that's because the point source is moving away from the observer and so it takes a longer time for the observer to receive each wavefront and this change in frequency or wavelength of the waves due to the relative motion between a, the source and an observer is called a Doppler shift. And a familiar example to you will be the siren of a police car. And when the police car is moving towards you, you hear a high pitch, high frequency. But when the police car is moving away from you, you hear a low pitch, low frequency. So you're able to detect the change in pitch, change in frequency as the car moves towards you and then away from you. The Doppler effect can be used to determine the speed of blood cells and the Doppler shift, the change in frequency, will be directly proportional to the speed of the blood cells. So the ultrasound probe directs ultrasound towards blood cells where they get reflected back to the probe. If the blood cell was stationary, then there would be no Doppler shift, no change in frequency. And so F prime, which is the frequency of the reflected ultrasound, received by the probe would equal f the original frequency of the ultrasound emitted. If the blood cell is moving towards the ultrasound probe then the probe will receive ultrasound of a higher frequency than the original frequency emitted. However if the blood cell is moving away from the probe, then the probe will receive ultrasound of a lower frequency than the original frequency emitted. And it's important to note that there is in fact two Doppler shifts occurring and that is one for the instant wave and one for the reflected wave. And the larger the change in frequency the greater the speed of the blood cells. This equation can be used to measure the speed of blood where delta F divided by F represents the fractional change in frequency. So delta F is the change in frequency, the Doppler shift. So that's equal to F prime minus F. Just a reminder, F prime is the frequency of the ultrasound detected by the probe, where F is the original frequency of the ultrasound that was emitted from the probe. The reason why we have 2 in the equation is for the double Doppler shift. So 
the change in frequency for the instant wave as well as for the reflected wave. V represents the speed of the blood cells. And we have the term V cos theta, where theta is the angle between velocity V and the direction of the ultrasound wave. So V cos theta represents the velocity component of the blood that is parallel to the direction of the ultrasound wave. And finally, C is the speed of sound in blood. It's not C that for the speed of light. When theta equals zero degrees, that is the direction of the ultrasound wave is parallel to the direction in which the blood cells are moving. Then cos of zero equals one. And so the Doppler shift or the change in frequency will be maximum. However, it's not practical for the probe to be directed so it's parallel to the blood vessel. When theta equals 90 degrees, then cos of 90 equals zero. So the Doppler shift or the change in frequency will equal zero. And that's because at this angle, the blood cell is not moving towards or away from the ultrasound wave. There is no component of the velocity of the blood cell in the direction of the ultrasound wave. So there's no Doppler shift. However, the ultrasound is traveling the most direct path to the blood cells. It's taking the shortest route. So there will be minimum signal loss, minimum attenuation or absorption of the ultrasound inside the body. So at this angle, the probe will receive maximum signal, but there will be no Doppler shift. So for small angles of theta, you'll have a large Doppler shift, a large change in frequency. However, the ultrasound will have to travel a greater distance inside the body to reach the blood cells in the artery. So there'll be a greater signal loss, greater attenuation or absorption of the ultrasound inside the body. So as a compromise, the angle of 45 degrees is used. In order to maximise the Doppler shift, but minimise the signal loss. So maximise the signal that is received by the probe. This diagram is showing you an ultrasound probe, which is being directed towards an artery. And here is the resulting trace showing the blood flow in the artery and how the blood pulses in the artery. The amplitude represents the Doppler shift, the change in frequency, and so represents the speed of the blood cells. The negative Doppler shift shows the backward flow of the blood due to the elasticity of the arteries. But then you see them, these blood cells moving forward. And then we get the next pulse of blood through the artery. The brightness represents the number of blood cells that are traveling at that speed.